Becky, thanks for joining me today uh, to talk about your Instructable. Um, I'm really happy to have you on. I've been a fan of your work forever, I feel. And, Donald, uh, you're welcome. It's nice <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Uh, let's um, let's dive right into it. What do we? What should we know about the maybe the backstory of the social stats tracker? Uh, sure. So last year I made a little YouTube subscriber counter so that I have like a live display tracking the growth of my YouTube channel. And um, the project we're talking about here, I don't know if you can even see. There we go. The LEDs um, shows you know uses a seven segment display um, behind a white piece of paper inside a shadow box to. Uh, display the live information and uses that Wi-Fi board to fetch the stats from the internet every so often. And so I made that, it was fun, but it was running out of digits fast. And I also wanted to make one that would just track all of my stats, um, things that I, uh, you know, gives me like extra motivation throughout the day. I like, you know, I'm sort of on the millennial cusp, so nobody's been giving me any crap about being a self-indulgent, uh, like, you know, feeling better about myself because people are paying attention to me, but I do like making and sharing things. And so the more people I'm reminded are out there, um, like hanging with the stuff that I make and share, it really motivates me every day. So I like to see those stats and track those stats and um, build electronics. And it's a really easy electronics project. So that's a fun thing uh, inspires. I like inspiring other people to like level up their electronic skills and maybe make something useful they didn't think that they had the skills to make before. Um, Great, yeah, and I just going over the instructable, which I'm going to share here in just a minute. Um, I learned already just in the first couple paragraphs something I didn't realize. Uh, let's see, where should I go? Application window. Let's go to the instructable. Boom, here it is. And there's a link to this instructable in the video description here. So please, uh, if anyone watching here wants to see this for themselves, it's right there for you. And yeah, so the I'm looking at the ingredients. The first thing that I didn't realize, um, there's many things I don't realize on a daily basis, but for this instructable, I've seen you use the um, the the feather huzzah board on several occasions, mm -hmm. but this doesn't use that. This is using the Node MCU ESP 12E board. Yeah, which is basically the same thing, but minus the LiPoly circuit. So the benefits of the Node MCU I've found are that um, not only is it available globally, like anybody can get their hands on it because it's sold by, it's one of those like um, hoverboard like designs that's manufactured by a lot of different um, companies in China. And yeah. thusly it's available basically, you know, for the folks in Europe, uh, the Adafruit stuff, the import taxes can be kind of expensive. And um, also the LiPoly charger is not needed for this project. And the first time I made this project, it was just uh, four digits and the feather seven segment display uh, that plugs right into the feather like that, uh, because it only needed four digits that made an economical use of the soldering time and the project went together real fast. But as soon as you're talking about adding more than one display, uh, the, you know, pin compatibility of the feather ecosystem loses its value. And then that that light poly circuit on there just becomes an extra expense that you're not going to use and uh, reduces the permanence of the project. Therefore, like if you can't leave it embedded because it's too valuable and you want to rip it out and use it for something else, that's like I wanted to offer up a solution that uh, is the, like a more affordable alternative to the feather because of course I've used it for a ton of different projects, including my free Internet of Things class on the Instructables site. So R right now, yeah. how hard is it? I mean, I know you go through this in the Instructable, but setting this up within uh, the Arduino software. It's the same as the any ESP8266 board. So if you've already used any ESP8266 board, you you already have support for the Node MCU in there, and it shows up as one of the ESP8266 board types. That's great. And then the other the other main ingredient here is the uh, seven segment display. Yeah, seven segment display with the backpack. So that's what makes it possible to drive so many. That the the I squared C backpacks for these are you know that extra chip that communicates between that like drives the individual LEDs of the display and then has logic to communicate with the Arduino board using only two pins. And then it, it creates a communication bus kind of like the NeoPixels or any other smart uh, protocol where you can wire them all in parallel with each other. So like all of the data go together, all of the clock pins go together, making it only need two pins on the Arduino board to connect as many displays as you have addresses for. And then you just uh, on the back of the board, there's like a there's solder tabs uh, that you can bridge and that like the combination of bridges 
changes the I squared C address so that each display has a unique address. And in the Instructable and in the video especially, I do a code walkthrough of how to set up the multiple um, the multiple displays together. So yeah, that's right. really handy. I wouldn't be able to do this project if it were just the bare seven segment displays because there wouldn't yeah. be enough yeah. pins. And your video is, as always, just amazing. They're the best instructables or best in instructional maker videos out there. I don't want to, you know, go over the top on how much I enjoy them, but uh, definitely <laughs> check out the videos. And I, you're, you're definitely talking to a fan. Um, so it's one board driving all four display. Well, actually, how many displays are? four okay there's four but the but the diag the last diagram you're seeing there with um six like the code it supports six but i only used four because i only needed two displays i only i'm only popular enough on twitter to need <laughs> like, double to need more than ten thousand um you know to show more than ten thousand and then the other um the other ones i'm still well within the like i'm still well below ten thousand on those two so i yeah. it's supported in the code you know what i love is when people leave a comment like it doesn't support more than 10,000 and then I click on their profile and they have like two Instagram followers. Like, Come <laughs> on, if you're like really popular <laughs> and you, and you, it's, it's just funny, you know, like people. They're um, dreaming big. Put up or shut up. I don't, I, so I didn't need uh, those extra displays. So I just omitted them, but I did write, I made it in the code so that the code doesn't have to change to add those other displays. For instance, like the, um, the code for the low digits is the one on the right. So versus like uh, the original code for the YouTube subscriber counter that I made, it, the, the version two, the displays I think are swapped the opposite way. So that like yeah. the um, high digits is the one, is the one, you know, like they're, um, uh, how to simplify, how to explain it. Like um, the numbers won't be in the wrong order when you add the extra display. Right, when you, when you grow, when your, your subscriber count grows, breaks the digit barrier, you can just tack an extra one on without having right, to without think much about it. Code. Exactly. Yeah. Great. And then to drive the the stats, you mentioned um, Brian Law. Is that right? The I've mispronounced. I've pronounced his name every way there is, and he never. <laughs> I think okay. it's Lock, like a soft, almost like the Loch Ness monster, but soft. And he's Irish, so he'll probably make fun of me again for the explaining it that way. But yeah, I don't know how to say his name. Um, he's a proper Irish fellow who's written uh, plenty of really awesome API libraries for the ESP8266 on Arduino, including mm -hmm. all of the, the, yeah, the YouTube one, the Facebook one, the Twitter one, the Instagram one, the Instructables one. And so my social set tracker matches up my three, um, my like three out of top three out of four, where I have like a separate one for YouTube. And then I have this one that has Twitter uh, Instagram and Instructables, where it would be pretty easy with his libraries to swap one of these out for Facebook, for example. Um, but yeah, his libraries are really great. All they do is interpret like the JSON data from the APIs and uh, like with the specific information about how to decode it into the variables you would need for your project and then uh, makes it so you can call those functions really easily. So since I don't have any web programming experience, I vaguely understand XML, HTML, PHP, Python, whatever kind of code, I guess, but I never was a web developer. So like the fact that he wrote those libraries made it just unbelievably easy to tackle this as an Arduino project. Um, I could basically just paste his library code into like the sample sketch for the LED matrix backpacks and it was ready to go. It's great. Yeah, and it, uh, it's helpful for for someone like myself, because uh, I need to be able to copy and paste a lot of code <laughs> in order to get things working. So I appreciate you uh, sourcing all that. Well, and I'm, you know, people I've, a lot of times mistake me as a coding expert or a um, computer science engineer or something, but I really am, I think I'm just good at sharing stuff and like highlighting what's useful and teaching beginners. And I'm really good at documentation, but people always see right through all of that to like whatever they're trying to learn. So. I'm um, flattered when people ask me code questions, but I am really just an expert at telling you how to copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, be able to find the stuff and copy and paste and and tweak it effectively is is so much of what it is about to to get into this stuff. You know. Yeah, like, and but you know what? I've also been finding it really interesting to learn more about how these libraries are put together by watching videos on Brian's channel. So I would encourage those watching to check out his YouTube channel and his Instructables account too, where he kind of goes into detail about how he wrote, you know, the different libraries and um, which I find yeah interesting because they're just beyond my 
level of understanding. So I'm always learning something new from him. Great. And then let's talk about the uh, the, the box construction itself too. There's a. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much more to the pr the the first like layer of it than doing a nice uh, printout of the template that you've got. Yeah, this one is a five by seven. The original one I made last year was a four by six and that wouldn't fit two of the displays across. So I, I bumped it up. And if I were to do it again, I'd probably even make it in a bigger frame. So a little bit more space um, around. You can see on the template piece where the you're supposed to put the displays, it's a little bit snug in there to find a place for the microcontroller if you really are as popular as the project might support. Um, <laughs> you'll see that I put the microcontroller like where the other two displays would go. Um, and yeah, it's just a piece of printer paper pressed up against the glass. The hardest part was getting the glass to be super clean because the inside of the shadow box has like a little cardboard kind of um, fuzzies coming off of it. And uh, then get the displays like taped up in the back so that they press up against the glass. So the other challenge is to um, use cardboard or whatever material you have to take up the space between the back of the circuits and the backing board for the shadow box so that the displays are actually pressed up against the glass. And that's how you get the crispest letters or numbers. Um, otherwise, the letters can look a little bit blurry since they're standing back from the paper. Sure. I appreciate you even including the link to the shadow box itself here. Um, I know it could it's have one been of easier. Like, why waste time making your own enclosure unless you've got a table saw and you like to make spline frames to make stuff <laughs> super nice, like all those cool woodworkers I see on YouTube. This is my option. It, you know, it costs twenty dollars with free shipping, and it's done, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, just all those little details really help make a project like this uh, easy to tackle. You know, I know people will sometimes leave those out, like, oh yeah, just find a shadow box. But knowing that there's the exact same one that you used here on the, uh, the bill of materials is, uh, it really helps make it something I want to tackle. So I see the cardboard here that you've got in the background to kind of keep things fit, like you were saying. Yeah, to kind of just take up the space to apply pressure to the back of the circuit so that they make good contact and, and don't stand away from the glass. Because especially with this, with that many displays taped in the front, the if you're using like regular weight printer paper, it could have a tendency to pull and, and shift if there's not enough uh, pressure kind of sandwiching everything up and in. Now, if someone was to make like a super deluxe version of this, what would be um, maybe like a 3D printed fittings or how do you think like the, um, the, the step up from cardboard would be or would it even be worth it? Yeah, no, I, I uh, <laughs> why wouldn't you use, use scrap whatever material you have around if you have yeah. scrap three, if, you know, pieces of 3D printing are scrapped to you, then that use that. Yeah. All right, great. And there it is coexisting with your YouTube tracker. Yeah, and you can see the middle one's kind of fuzzy, right? Oh yeah, just because, and that's just because it's slightly back away from the paper. Yeah. It's great. And then for the power getting to it, it's just the a USB cable to the board. Um, Put into the board's it. USB port. Yeah, that's yeah. another reason I like the Node MCU and the Feather is that they're USB. They can be USB powered, so it's a no-brainer. I have a million micro USB hang cables hanging out. I can, especially the ones that aren't data. Screw those cables. You find them in your bin and you try to use them and they don't work with your phone and you you think it's everything else but the cable and then or your Arduino <laughs> and it turns out it's a de it's a charge only cable. So uh. you save your charge only cables for projects like this where you just gonna hang it on the wall and it is power only and it keeps it out of your stash. <laughs> <laughs> Hate the charge only cables. Oh man, I yeah I have one of them still floating around here that uh drives me crazy, but I, I teach a I class of grad students at School of Visual Arts and and um, there I teach them, you know, are learning Arduino and, and Internet of Things. And when they have a bad cable, it drives me nuts because the symptoms are like anything but right. It's like, did you install the drivers and do you have did do the permissions work? And but, uh, you know, after checking a million things, it's comes down to it's the cable. It's the most frustrating thing. And, but it's OK. You're, you're teaching them about troubleshooting. That's really important. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, all right. And then also just at the end of your instructable, and I think it's something everyone should know more about, is the classes that you have on instructables. Can you talk yeah. about those a little? Sure. Yeah. So these are free entry level online classes for all different types of stuff at instructables.com slash classes, including, you know, not only electronics stuff, but also um, 
you know, using a table saw and making bread and using adhesives. So the ones that I've written, you're looking right now at the Internet of Things class, which is an ESP8266 Arduino based class. It's kind of like an uh, intermediate level Arduino class. So if you've taken my intro level Arduino class, you, you can then level up to um, this, which goes over all the extra things you need to do to connect to the internet, and then uh, goes through the most common like project archetypes you might need, which includes like sending data to the internet, receiving data from the internet, and then a project that combines the two, and shows you how to use um, the web service if this then that with your ESP8266 project, so you can extend um, into a lot of other um, systems and real world stuff that you already use, including like smart home devices, and um, your phone and email and text messages and stuff like that. So super cool, really fun, got really some good feedback on the class so far. And um, I would encourage you all to check it out. Great. Great. And I'm going to stop screen sharing here. I also did classes on um, jewelry making and knitting, if you're interested in some non-electronics stuff by me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of great classes there, too. Uh, there's pasta seen... making. There's, there's one on cooking steak. I copy edited that one, which involved making a steak. That was great. <laughs> all right. Well, that's uh, that's all I, I wanted to be able to do. Do you uh, tell people where to find more of your work and uh, anything else you feel like talking about or plugging? Sure. I uh, I publish new videos every week on my YouTube channel, so you can find that in the. Um, I think Donald will add it to the description down below and also on my Instructables page is where I put out new original work. This year, um, I am working with the Tinkercad team a lot to develop the lesson curriculum for Tinkercad circuits and Arduino. So um, keep an eye on the Tinkercad site and on Instructables um, for some cool intro level Arduino stuff using the, the new tools in Tinkercad circuits, formerly one, two, 3D circuits. So it's a really neat uh, online only kind of, you can learn Arduino like all in the simulator and you don't need any uh, hardware in front of you. Uh, so those lessons are, I'm putting those together now and they're really fun to work on. So that's what's coming out from me um, later on, but also some cool collaborations on my channel. So, you know, subscribe. And also Donald, like you should build a YouTube subscriber counter because you're about to hit 10,000 subscribers. So it's a perfect project to celebrate that milestone. It could be happening. This video right now is helping me achieve that goal, Becky. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here and then check out the, the chat room to see if anyone's around uh, to ask any questions. But also if you're new to my channel, let me encourage you to subscribe um, and check out the maker updates that I do every week, many of which feature Becky's work. Um, <laughs> But let's uh, let's take a look at the chat room now. <laughs> and nobody in the chat room. Nobody in the chat room. I should have just asked you to look in the chat room. <laughs> All right. Well, Becky, uh, thanks for your time, and and uh, you can hang out with me for a little bit here. But otherwise, uh, I, I'll let you get back to making great content. Thanks. If anybody has later questions, of course they can ask them in the comments, and I'll come back and check them out too. So, thanks everybody. Thanks, Becky. Talk to you soon.